Hello and welcome to the broadcast today. This is Roger and Cheryl coming to you uh, with the word of the Lord uh, in our heart. This is lesson 11 on now faith and uh, we are excited to be here with you. Uh, you know, I want to encourage you today, uh, those of you that's been listening and maybe if you're, you're even if you're a new listener, uh, that you get your Bibles, you, you take notes. The way to get the best out of the Word of God is you need to put your eyes on it yourself. Many times you hear us saying faith does come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God and we can talk it. Uh, but it's important also that you study and that you get in the Word and that you um, put your eyes on the Scriptures as well. I know uh, I can't confess to be a, a, an excellent reader, but I do know whenever I sit down and, and discipline myself to read and get in the Word and look at the Scriptures, uh, that it comes more alive. The, the uh, <clears throat> uh, discernment of revelation knowledge begins to come alive and you know we're we're on a subject that i think is very critical uh, to the body of christ and that's faith uh you know we don't get stuck there on one thing many times people get stuck on one thing but but i believe there's a balance in faith and grace and and uh you know all the doctrines of the bibles you, you know uh, people tend to want to do away with something once they feel like they've got the fullness of the revelation tend to want to do away with with something, with a particular thing, uh, but but I believe it's time that we take what we've got. Don't throw away our ABCs just because we can read the whole paragraph now. Uh, but stay with what God's doing. That we uh, there are principles in the Word of God that we all, from from the time we're born again, from the time we begin to study the Word of God, we need functioning in our lives. And Cheryl and I come to you. Uh, basically wanting to share with you the things that make us strong, the that, that things that uh, we hear and, and things that make us strong, uh, but at the same time realizing that we have a variety of people on different levels in our uh, audience that need to hear the Word of God. We've got people that uh, even in other countries that may not uh, have the, the Word as readily uh, as you and I have on Christian television and different things. Uh, but we have different groups that watch us, and uh, we we had noticed this last week. Uh, we had a growing audience that's been more than than usual for us. Um, and it's not about numbers; it's about are we affecting uh, people? Are we helping people? And there's where our heart is. Not just in uh, being on live or being on uh, uh, media, but but being effective in touching your lives. Uh, you know, and and. Uh, all this, a lot of this started out of that our time when COVID came and we were shut in. Uh, but at the same time, then we began to touch people that we didn't realize we were touching. People that needed to hear the Word of God. Uh, Cheryl is uh, Cheryl studies the Word of God. I study the Word of God, and and uh, you know, this is something God laid on her heart uh, that we both flow in and believe that God strengthens us with it. And we believe it will strengthen you. There's the place where you should be. Not somewhere uh, that keeps you frustrated. Not somewhere that keeps you uh, discouraged and telling you uh, how bad things are. But telling you that through your faith you're an overcomer. Uh, that you can arise out of every circumstance and every situation that comes against you. And I come on a little preachy, but that's that's okay. I feel it's the Spirit. Uh, just setting the stage and... Uh, Cheryl's going to continue with a lesson, lesson 11 on now faith, uh, and and we're going to flow together as we go into the service. But first, we're going to pray. If you're if you're listening and you're not born again, I want to invite you to ask Jesus. The Scripture says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth uh, that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you you're born again. I want you to do that. That's how you that's how you get there. As you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Uh, if you need healing right now while we're praying, the same word for salvation and healing is the same. Believe in your heart. Reach out and touch the Lord, and He'll touch you and heal you. Circumstances in your life, we could go on and on. You know, we're, we're, we've got a broad audience here, uh, but let's pray together, okay? Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, as Cheryl and I come in agreement with the people that are watching today. God, that you touch their lives, God. We thank you, Lord God, that that in our heart we desire to see your people, God, arise from the the places of discouragement, the places, uh, God, where that 
that religion many times has taken us and life itself the 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 heartbreaks of life but god i thank you lord that you came to bind up the brokenhearted and to set the captive free and i thank you today as we uh come on this uh broadcast as we uh, as we come before this people, God, that the anointing of God comes forth to destroy, not uh, to destroy the yoke, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that the yoke uh, with the and bondage of the world is destroyed. And God, now we are yoked with you, Lord. We and when we're yoked with you, God, you are the strong, the strong one. And God, you carry us. You, uh, you become the the strength in our. Uh, going forth and God I thank you today God father for that one that don't know you father I thank you father that that she prays today God she calls on the name of the Lord uh, and he as well there's 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 more than one God in the name of Jesus uh, father we ask you into our heart say that I ask you into my heart I believe with my heart and I confess the Lord Jesus uh, that he's raised from the dead and I, father in the name of Jesus I thank you Lord now is a day of a new new creation man uh, that's coming forth and God I give you praise for it I thank you Lord for your healing touch on the word today God as it goes forth that you send your word and heal them and I give you praise for it in Jesus name amen well God bless you and thank you again for uh, tuning in and uh, I'm sure I'm looking forward this is lesson 11 and uh, let's just get right into now faith all right, well, we've been talking about James chapter 1, various things here, and I'm going to just review the last couple of verses and things we said a little bit. We were talking about James 1, 9 through 11, and about uh, rich, riches or poverty, more or less. I'll just say it that way, riches or poverty, or plenty and lack. <laughs> And um, either realm is not a good one to be stuck in. Uh, I do absolutely believe that the Word of God teaches that the people of God should be prosperous in every area of life. There's many scriptures and at some point I'm going to do a teaching on those kinds of things. But one thing we said last time is moving from one realm of riches to lack or from lack to the realm of riches can be difficult. It's hard not to have money when you so desperately need money um, or the appropriate amount and sufficient means to live your life on and enjoy life. But it's especially difficult when we don't have good relationships and good finances and things to help us progress on in life but it's just as difficult to move from a position of lack into wealth especially if it's an immediate thing yeah the tendency with that is to become proud and wasteful and as i said god's not against wealth there's just a lot of scriptures many of them have been misinterpreted I grew up in a church that taught poverty. I grew up in a home that had a poverty mentality. We were not poor, however. I didn't know that until I was an adult and realized how different my life was from other people. But my mindset was so poverty-minded and it, it's been a struggle to get rid of it and get free of it. I'll just tell you the truth about it. But the point of it is, is that God wants us to prosper and be in health as our soul prospers. The one thing in James chapter 1 verses 9 through 11 that many people overlook is uh, it says in verse 11, For the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass and its flowers flower falls off and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed so too the rich man in the midst of his pursuits will fade away. And I pointed out that it stresses his pursuits. That was the problem with the rich young ruler that came to Jesus. The scripture says he went away sorrowful because he trusted in his money. Yeah. He trusted in his riches. And um, he could not understand and did not have the knowledge, apparently, to know that Jesus was the Christ and he would have offered him a much better life. And anyways, the difference is 
the pursuit that we're taking. We're not supposed to pursue wealth. Our pursuit is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And if we do that, Jesus himself said this, all these things necessary to life will be added to you if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I want to talk just a minute about what seeking the kingdom of God is. Now that's a broad subject that can be looked at from different angles, but I want to start here, and that is, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. Then through the apostle Paul, the Holy Spirit wrote, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy Amen. in the Holy Spirit. So inside of us there is a kingdom. It is to be a kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy. So when we are seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right here is where we go. What's going on inside of us? Are we peaceful? Are we full of heaviness? Are we full of anxiety? Are we wondering which way to go and we're in confusion? Well, righteousness is understanding the way God does things and wants things done. Why does he want them done that way? Because that's what will bring blessing to us. That's what will bring peace to us. That's what will bring prosperity to us in every area of life once we begin to understand and walk in the ways of God we learn the ways of God through the Holy Scriptures so as the king kingdom of God is developed in us then the righteousness will be seen and shown people will realize we're walking a different way Peace comes. Righteousness and peace go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. And then joy comes. When you have peace, to have peace is the absence of anxiety, the absence of fear, the absence of worry. All of those things, when peace truly comes, those things are not there. And then because those things are not there, the joy begins to come. Because we're we don't have to carry all that stuff. Now it takes, um, just like the scripture says, seeking. When you're seeking something, I was seeking a book the other day. I went through my whole closet where I keep a lot of my books and that are special to me. And I thought, sure, I had put it in that closet. Empty boxes, couldn't find that book. I came downstairs, looked in our big bookshelf in Roger's office. I couldn't find that book. But I then I thought, well, maybe I don't really need that book. But it kept gnawing at me to find that book to look up something. So um, yesterday, I came back downstairs and looked through the bookcase the same place I had looked the day before, but I found the book. And I looked up what I was interested in and so forth. But what I'm saying is that seeking requires effort. It's not always, oh, I found it. It's right here. And that's the end of it. No. Sometimes we have to seek until we produce what we're seeking after. Amen. So, um, when we begin to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that's really sort of a beginning place of faith. You have to have faith that there's a real God. He has a real kingdom. Uh, he comes to dwell in a human being. And all of those sorts of things. So, anyhow, um, getting back to where we are talking about in James along these lines, we can rest in the word of God that if we seek first his kingdom, he'll take care of the necessities of life. He'll even, as we keep singing, bringing, bring us into a place where we have more than enough. This is the progression of the kingdom of God in our lives. So um, we know when we have a lot of money, it can be very tempting to have a lot of sensual things and to you know begin oh I need this I need this I need this and nothing wrong with having things however 
We still seek first the kingdom of God. We put our money first into the kingdom of God and to advancing it in the earth. You know, the problem today, especially, well, it's in every nation. The problem in every nation is that Jesus Christ is to be Lord. He's to be Lord so that we can have an orderly earth, each nation working in an order that will help and bless one another. That's always God's plan. God's not angry with anybody. So if somebody's telling you that, that's not the truth. And that's not what the scriptures teach. He is not angry. And he has already, in fact, I read this morning, I was reading in Timothy. And it says, God is the Savior of all men, especially those of the household of faith. So, he is the Savior of all men. It's just that all men don't know that. That's why we give. We have several ministries that God has uh, laid on our hearts to give to that we give to um, consistently. And uh, because we believe in their ministry. We believe that they are preaching the truth of God's Word. They go to other countries just like we do. But people need Jesus Christ. They need to know about the kingdom of God. And if we have faith and we believe the word of God, we're going to promote his kingdom because there's no other place of help. There's no other place of refuge. It is all in Jesus Christ. It is all in what God has provided for us. All right, so the point is we don't focus on wealth or on poverty. That's not our focus. It's not our pursuit. And so here's something I want to read to you. It's in Psalm 78, verses 41 through 42. And I think this is an important point to remember. You know, sometimes when we get off on talking about money, people get real nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and mainly because we haven't talked correctly about it. But here's the thing. Psalm 78, 41 through 42 says, Yes, they turned back and tempted God. Now this is talking about the children of Israel. The Old Testament is written for our um, admonition to teach us to correct us, to help us understand things about God's ways and dealings with people. So it says, Yes, they, the children of Israel, turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not His hand, nor the day when He delivered them from the enemy. Well, has God ever delivered you from the enemy? Has He ever taking care of a serious need or a little need that you had, don't forget those things. Because when we forget them and we turn back to complaining and grumbling and murmuring, feeling hopeless and starting to worry and pick up all the cares again, we're limiting God. Now faith does not limit God. Now faith looks at this mighty God that we serve and the possibilities that are out there that he desires to do for his children. We are his children. Do we get that? We are God's children. Amen. The Thank creator you, of everything. Amen. Everything. He's our father. We're his children. Do you think he doesn't want to take care of you and provide for you? Well, yes, he does. And yes, he will. But our now faith has to kick in where we believe what God is saying. All right. If we believe him, then we're not going to be limiting God. Amen. That is part of the growth of faith. The growth of getting our soul renewed so that we are transformed instead of wrestling all the time with Oh, I need this. I've got this bill to pay and I don't know what I'm going to do or how am I going to get a better job or whatever it is. How am I going to take care of my kids? God has the answer. 
we are not to limit God we're to look at the word of God see what he has to say and then put our faith to work now when our emotions are contrary and we're feeling exactly opposite of what the scripture says but my God shall supply all your need according yes. to his riches thank you Jesus not yours not ours his riches then we put our faith on that no matter what our soul is doing we may feel like screaming or <laughs> or worse but we can believe what God has said we put our faith in what God has said and believe it or not the soul will come into alignment and it will calm down and it will come to peace all right so um god had a problem like this and there's a lot of things for us to learn from the old testament and i'm going to read deuteronomy 8 8 6 through 18 and it says therefore you shall keep the commandments of the lord your god to walk in his ways and to fear him <clears throat> for the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land now this was his promise to the children of Israel a land of brooks of water of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates a land of olive oil and honey a land wherein you shall eat bread without scarceness listen to the word of God thou shalt not lack anything in it a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you may dig brass when you have eaten and are full then you shall bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee beware that you forget not the Lord your God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day lest when you have eaten and art full and house hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein and when the herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage who led you forth out of the um, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought there was no water who brought forth water out of the rock of flint who fed you in the wilderness with manna which your forefathers knew not that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end and thou say in your heart my power and my mouth might has done all these things I did this with my own hands I did this all by myself I worked hard I saved and I saved well and I skimped on other things and saved I did this by myself but you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he that gives you the power to get wealth why does he give us the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto his fathers as it is this day now there's a whole lot of things in this scripture that we're getting close to time out. I don't have time to go into in this lesson. But here's what I want to say and then I'll let Roger wind it up. This was given under the first covenant. The first covenant was a glorious covenant. The scripture says that the law was holy and good. And... God was wanting to use the children of Israel to see and enjoy his blessings so they could bless other nations but they never did get that and there were a lot of reasons for that however what I want to say is the Bible tells us we're under a new and better covenant and the land that we are in is the land of Christ the anointed one and his anointing and he dwells within the believer the person who has been born again 
by the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. And so we have things available to us. Do you think God's going to do less for us than what He promised the children of Israel? Well, if you have now faith, He's not going to do less. If you have now faith and you're exercising it, you'll see over time that God keeps his word to you just like he wanted to with the children of Israel and did on the occasions that he could. All right, well, time's about up. I'm going to let Roger finish up and we'll pick up here in our next lesson. Well, let me let me hurry on because there's a lot just stirring in my, in my spirit on, on what we just talked about. Going back to, to James... Uh, 1 and 9 uh, I would like to read that out of the King James Version because uh, it said let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted and uh, you know our walk with God you, you said righteous, uh, that the kingdom of God's righteous, righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost so uh, what brings this righteousness is brought by the blood of Jesus Christ uh, peace by the Holy Spirit and, and joy in that God um, God manifests himself to us in a great way but but let the man of low degree that means he that, that's lacking something uh, rejoice in that he is exalted not because oh look at me I am uh, uh, I'm, I'm just way down here in this low degree uh, and I'm just I'm just going to be content in that uh, because that's what God's using in my life that's not what it says in that he is exalted the anointing of God always comes uh, to uh, preach the gospel. This, the the uh, scripture says to preach the gospel to the poor. The gospel means good news. Uh, to say it like this, the good news to the poor. So God's not keeping us of low degree so he can teach us. Uh, the next verse says, uh, the next verse says, uh, but the rich in that he is made low because of the uh, flower of grass uh, shall wither away. See, it's whether we're rich or whether we're poor, whether we have or whether we don't, uh, is not doesn't make us righteous, doesn't make us humble. Uh, what does is we acknowledge God in our lives. We we count ourselves uh, as rich if we if we seem to be in a low degree. We count ourselves as the riches uh, of God. Um, the Apostle Paul uh, was a man of wealth, a man of substance. Uh, but he counted all his credentials, all that stuff, the scripture says, but dumb that he might gain Christ. So what is what is our riches? Our riches in ga is in gaining Christ. But now, uh, God does exalt us in due time. Whenever we uh, humble ourselves, whenever we call upon the name of the Lord, um, you know, and uh, the, there was, uh, there in, uh, uh, Psalm where you were reading, uh, you know God just God just identifies who He is. It's not God's not out to show us that we're just low down rotten sinners. God's out to show all through us. What's God going to demonstrate in the in the earth? He's going to demonstrate Himself. What does He want to manifest? Mm -hmm. Not how great I am. Song doesn't say how great I am. It says how great is our God. And see, that's what God wants to demonstrate through His body, through the, the, the temples that have been raised up, set in the earth today. Uh, and how do we do How do we get there? Well, first of all, we take that step of faith, realizing, yes, God redeemed me. God saved me, brought me out of miry clay, set my feet on a rock, and now I'm here to stay. I, I, we are out of time, and we need to pray for the people. We need to just... Uh, call on the name of the Lord and uh, you know I'm excited about what what's ahead excited about what God's doing well, let's pray and then I'll, maybe I'll talk more as we go off uh, Father in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord for the word today you said you send your word to heal them God anybody that needs a touch from you we thank you for it today and God we thank you Lord that you go you meet our need and you go beyond our need and God, you, you meet your own need. Your own need is that we worship you, that we come to that place that we can unequivocally, unhindered worship you in spirit and in truth. And we give you praise for it today. Uh, we give you honor and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Well, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, we are going on a couple of mission trips uh, to uh, uh, Peru and Thailand. We are at this uh, at this time we need, in fact, during this program, we may even be in uh, Peru and on our way back to, and then three weeks later we go to Thailand. We still need some finances uh, to do everything we need to do, about $5,300 as of this taping. Uh, the address will be on the screen, uh, and you can, uh, or on the Facebook page, you can click the link to the PayPal account if you can do it like that. It uh, will be accessible to us while we're on the mission field. We love you, God bless you, and we'll see you next time.